Hello kings and queens, welcome back to my channel. For those of you who don't know, my name is Emmanuel and that means you haven't subscribed already. So just take a second, click on the subscribe button, turn on notification, I promise you, you're gonna enjoy it. All right? Now, in our last video, we learned a lot about um, error handling and today we're pretty much gonna round it off by learning how to create custom errors and handle them, all right? So without further ado, create a project and let's get started. So how do we create errors? So the first thing we're gonna to need to do is to create an enum and I'm gonna call mine macro error. Now this needs to conform to localized error just so that I can have a localized description, all right? And right in here, we need to specify the different types of errors that we want to have. So what I'm gonna do is say um, case, uh, let's say invalid email, right? That's an error. We're gonna have um, invalid phone number and invalid name. Awesome. Now, in order to specify the um, localized description, what I need to do is say description, just like that. So we're gonna use the error description. You can see a localized message describing what error occurred. So I'm gonna say error description, and this is gonna switch self. So we want to basically switch through all of our error cases that are available here. And so the, for the first one, invalid email, what I wanna do is return email is invalid. For the second one, invalid phone, I'm going to return please enter a valid phone number of 11 characters or digits. Awesome. And for um, invalid name. By the way, you can actually enter whatever you want, right? It depends totally on you. So for invalid name, I can simply say, please enter at least two names, right? Or, well, yeah, this is good. So here we have our custom error, our macro error. Let's actually use it. So what I'm gonna do is create a function and I want this function to simply validate a form. So I'm gonna say is valid form. And this is gonna take in an email as a string, a phone number as a string as well, and a name. Also type string. Now this is where we're gonna do our validation. Now the first thing we're gonna do is to validate our email. And to keep things clean, I'm gonna create a function called is valid email like this and I need this to throw in case there's an error so remember from our last video we need to use the keyword throws now if you haven't watched the last video on um, error handling please just take a second pause this video and head over to that video and watch it it's just basically gonna clear out a lot of things that we're doing here all right and yeah you can find the link in the description okay so uh, for the implementation, I'm just gonna paste something I use very often. And this is a uh, regular expression. I know I haven't thought this yet, so um, don't worry too much about it. If you want me to make a video about this, then just leave it in the comment section and I'll definitely consider, okay? So um, in a nutshell, what we're doing here is we have a regular expression for email and we're creating a predicate that basically helps us match um, a text, an email text, to that regular expression. And if it matches, it returns true. If it does not, it returns false, All right? And as you guessed, we actually need access to our email. So I'm just gonna pass that as argument. And now we're not gonna be returning anything. We simply wanna throw if there's an error. So what we're gonna do is check if this guy returns false. So we're just gonna say if, not this, then we want to throw and we want to throw 
a particular error. So remember, we created some errors right here, macro error. So say macro error dot, what type of error is that? Invalid email, just like that. Otherwise, we're just going to continue like that. I hope that makes sense. Now, how do we use this? We simply call is valid email. Sorry, is valid email. And we're going to pass in the email address like this. And it's going to throw an error or show us an error because remember, this guy throws. So it needs to be handled right here. So, how do we handle this? We can simply use a try bang or a do try sorry a do catch so I'm just gonna use a do catch so that we can see the error displayed so do and right here I'm gonna say catch and remember catch has access to error so I'm gonna bring this guy into our do right try paste that here and in our catch block I simply want to print the error so we're gonna say error dot localized description all right now let's actually call this method and see what happens. So I'm going to say is valid form and for email, I'm going to pass in an invalid email. And for now, I'm going to leave these two guys empty. So let's run this and see what we have. So you can see immediately we have the error. Email is invalid because it got over here, tried to check if the email was valid and this guy threw an error saying invalid email. That's what we got right here. Wonderful. So let's actually put in a valid email. So I'm gonna say test at maco.com. Now if we run this, we're not gonna see any outputs because this is valid, All right? So we didn't have any crash whatsoever. If we wanted to see the correct or successful message, we could add a print statement here and say, everything is correct. I run it again, you should see everything is correct. Awesome. So we've actually used our custom error message and we've utilized um, error handling here to block any invalid email. Now let's do the same thing for phone number. So right here, I'm going to create a function called is valid phone. This again is going to take in a phone and a string. And like the email is going to throw an error if it does not match. Now, I'm not going to use a regular expression for this. I'm just going to um, count the number of characters that are in the string just so we have a valid um, error message, right? So um, over here, what I'm going to do is check if phone dot count is equal to 11 right so if it is not we're gonna throw an error macro error dot invalid phone and we could actually accomplish this using regular expression but I don't want to bore you with a lot of unfamiliar stuff so I'm just gonna wrap this in a bracket or well, just wrap all of them so we basically want to perform this operation before we check if it is false. So get me the count. If it is equal to 11, then don't worry. If it is not equal to 11, then throw an error. All right. So how do we do this? Now, right here, what we can do is actually try a different um, validation. So I can now try is valid phone and pass in our phone number. All right. Now, if I were to run this, we would see, guess what? Good, I'm sure you guessed it. So this guy passed, and he went over to the next line and tried to validate the phone number. But now the phone number failed. It said, please enter a valid phone number of 11 digits. So how do we fix that? Go ahead, write whatever phone number is 11 digits. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. Right? And run it again and voila everything is correct so you can see how uh, this basically just makes things look quite cleaner and error is handled very well and you can see that the catch actually caught error from different types right so it just displayed localized description let's handle the last error 
So we're going to create one more function right here, and this is going to be is valid name. It's going to take in a name, type string, and of course it's going to throw. And what do we want to do here? We want to count how many words are in your name and make sure that it is at least two. All right? Well, what was the error message again? Yep, at least two. So what we're going to do is say, first let's get the count. So let's say um, words be equal to, I'm going to say name dot separated by, and simply going to separate this by white spaces. Now this is going to convert this to an array, and we can simply count the number of words that are in that array. So if words dot count is less than two, then we want to throw an error. So I'm going to say throw macro error dot. What error we're we going to throw? Invalid name, just like that. Now if we come over here and try to validate our name, we can pass in name, and when we run this, we should see please enter at least two names. And if I were to enter in manual and run this, we're still gonna get the same error, but if I enter my last name and run it, everything is correct. Awesome. So that's how we use our custom errors. Now there's one more thing I'd like to show you. So um, right here, what I wanna do is change the email to I want to add an associated value to this. Now, if you don't know about associated values, then I'd recommend that you just go ahead, watch my video on um, associated values. It's actually very important, and you're going to see a scenario where this can be very helpful. All right. So I'm going to take in a string right here for invalid email, and I'm going to change the error message to say email, and then I'm going to put in a quote and say email is invalid. So right here, I'm just going to say let email, all right? Now, I'm going to put an invalid email right here. Just remove this and run it again. Uh-oh, what did I miss? All right, so when we are calling invalid email, we actually need to pass in the email address. So let's go ahead and run this, and everything should be fine. So you can see email test is invalid. So you can actually make your error messages more custom, more specific to the um, particular scenario, right? Now, before we call this a video, I want to mention that you can actually decide to handle specific error messages differently. So for this particular scenario, I was actually handling all my errors using this simple catch block, right? I could decide to handle my try, sorry, my uh, invalid email error in a different way. So this is how we do it. What we need to do is come over here and we're going to say catch and we're going to specify the particular error that we want to catch. So macro error dot and let's catch, hmm, let's catch name. No, yeah, invalid name. So uh, one thing we need to note is right here, we don't have access to error. So we need to specify our message directly from here, right? So what I'm gonna do is say print, and you could still say macro error dot invalid name, and then you can get the error description if you wanted, or you could become more creative and just do some things like, uh, hey, bruv, or um, come on, come on, what am I writing? Come on, don't you know your name? All right, so just shout out the person and um, hopefully the person just figures it out. So now for test, I'm just gonna make this correct, maco.com and for my name, I'm gonna remove one and just say, eh? So I'm gonna run this and let's see what we have now. So you can see, come on, don't you know your name? 
And that's because it came right here. So you can decide to catch particular errors or the rest are just going to fall to the general catch. Right. Now this brings us to the end of this video. If you enjoyed it, again, please go ahead, click on the like button. If you haven't subscribed, please go ahead, click on the subscribe button, turn on your notification and see you guys in the next video.